welcome back fellow travelers to another captivating companion customization tutorial. This is the one some have been waiting for. In this tutorial, we will explore the ways I customize those unique Lich Deck companions and other techniques on how to make your very own unique boutique of cosmic critters. Do not use the save editor unless you are familiar with coding. Whenever you change the game file, there is a risk. Use the utmost caution, have your saves backed up, and test often. These tutorials are to demonstrate what I do to customize. I want to begin by saying that I learned the various parts of creatures before I started on any kind of customization tricks. I did this by studying each of the available descriptors for any given creature's JSON code hierarchy via Peter Lon's Creature Builder Excel workbook. First, Let's start with the first trick I learned, removing creature body parts. The first example of this trick was with my Diplo friend Launchpad. It was only through some guessing and testing that I found out the way to pull off that look. What I noticed is that some of these descriptors had the word null as part of the line of code. All descriptors will be in uppercase. All caps when you spell the man's name. Null denotes nothing is there. Then I thought to just try and put the word null after an available descriptor to see if it would remove that creature's part. And it did. It made it disappear in game. In the case of Launchpad. I changed a line of code from uh, quotation caret underscore neck one underscore one quotation into neck one null. As you can see here. And then I logged in to find the neck was gone. I then changed the uh, line eight to the quotation caret underscore D B A C C underscore five, and the rest was history. By the way, uh, D is going to stand for Diplo, B is going to stand for back, A C C is going to stand for accessory, and so that would mean that line is uh, Diplo back accessory number five. Now when you ride on launch pad it looks like you're riding in a flying saucer or jean jacket from Nope. Next I would try the same trick with my robot antelope golden. Except here, you would need to change two lines of code. Uh, the fourth and the eighth descriptor lines. Legs, back, one, null, and legs front one, null, respectively. Uh, so please notice that I had to add an underscore and then put the word null after the attribute. I tried it first by just replacing the one and uh, that didn't work. Uh, but with some guessing and testing, I figured out what did the trick. Uh, so I ended up putting the underscore and null after the one. And that is what made it work. 
Uh, what I also did was null out the cords, leg, back, and cord, leg, front. Uh, which made it have no legs at all. Making it look all floaty. Uh, kind of like a, a hover jet. Or a hover motorcycle, yeah. But it felt it looked way cooler if the cords were still visible because they had a pulsing animation to them. Uh, my friend Enra Silver affectionately called them Phantom Legs. My friend Drucifer gave me his favorite uh, robo antelope uh, to do the same thing to its legs. Now, I liked it so much that I cloned it and called it Kit, and now it's the one I give out in all of my giveaway thoughts. The next creatures I decided to try and null out some of the parts on were Cordyceps and Mega Decays. Now, Cordyceps was a gift to me by Enra Silver, and it's the rarest creature in the game. I thought it would be great if it were floating around, so I nulled out the legs. The underside was smooth with no leg indentation, so it looked like it naturally floated about. I also up the scale a bit uh, to 15 meters and changed the color in the egg sequencer using comet droplets. Uh, you can also do this to any spider or floating spider creature type. Uh, Mega Decays is a floating spider creature type. And I used uh, silica powder in the egg sequencer to color it that color green. The next examples are Talus and Falcor. Now I got really excited by my previous results and I wanted to see what, uh, you know, which other creatures I could get some great looks out of. Now I thought it had to have been the griffin and dragon that I try next. So I started with my griffin named uh, that I ended up calling Talus. And I remembered, you know, they only had two options for tails. And in my opinion, both did not have a bird-like look to them. Uh, so I decided to take the tail off and check its look. And to my surprise, it made it look way more bird-like. Talus. Quotation carrot underscore tail underscore eagle underscore null. Quote. So you're adding that underscore and null. Now Falcor. was a little different. You know, I like the dragon that my friend Draco HFT gave to me. It had all the attributes I wanted in a dragon. I just wanted the color and the egg sequencer to my liking. So I was struck with inspiration and decided to remove its wings so I could have my very own never ending luck dragon. I changed the color again uh, to get it close to white or light gray as I could. 
He, he even flies around like Falcor. Onward! Onward! We're finally on to the glitch deck. By the way, Enra Silver also ended up naming him Glitch Dak. As he was pretty savvy with coming up with appropriate names, and I just ended up running with it. This experiment came about by being inspired by Contagion's flying drill pet that I saw at a community night. They're the godfather of pet customization and was the person who also brought in the dragon and griffins back in the day at community nights. It fascinated me how he was able to stack those parts of the drill. And I also wondered how he was even able to get the drill to fly around. Now, I had an idea how and thought I should give it a try with a different creature type first and see if those would stack. So I started with my plow, named Wheelie. So this plow already had this line, quotation, carrot, underscore, plow, underscore, a, quotation. So I added the next plow, underscore, b, right underneath it. I logged in. And was amazed it worked. I had my first glitch deck. You can't interact with plows normally, so you can't interact with this one. And I can give you one, but it would have to be requested so I can make an egg for it in order to share it. Uh, I show you how to do that sort of thing in the first tutorial. I was only able to get this plow as a pet in the first place because of a mod. I tried adding more descriptor lines, but ended up just dialing it back to just these two, as I it just felt it looked better with just these two. That's what you should always go for as well. What you feel looks good. Even if someone ends up calling them ugly. Do you? Now, I knew I had to make some companions that travelers could interact with. This is where I decided to pick up the pace and see how it looked on other creature types. I next went to Weird Float. So these weird float creatures. I experimented uh, a lot with different looks, a lot of different descriptors. I ended up with a set of three creatures that all had three layers of creature stacked. Uh, so we have Rolling Stoned, Shards and Cronkite. Again, I tried a lot of combinations and amounts of creatures stacked, but those are the ones I vibe with the most. I won't stop experimenting with these though. Uh, you can only pet and feed these because that's what you can normally do with these weird float type creatures. I also made a proto roller named Curly. Here's Curly. And like the weird floats, you can only pet and feed it. Next, I wanted to try this with proto flyers, as these creatures you can actually pet, feed, and ride. Now, 
this is where things got a bit complicated. Okay, so I tested with all of these different proto flyer descriptors, but some I felt just did not go together looks wise. However, I didn't give up there. I just tried different descriptor combinations, uh, then placed the descriptors in different orders in the descriptor hierarchy. That's how I finally came up with the No Man's Sky Enterprise. It's all in all of its uh, geeky glory. This is also how I finally figured out how the flying drill was able to fly. It was because the descriptors were in a certain order. So keep that in mind when you're testing. Uh, now I want to go over some other tricks I used to experiment with. For instance, in the mentioned glitch stack plow, I was able to get it to stay on top of the ground instead of digging underground by changing the creature type. from plow to proto roller so natively it had plow I changed it to proto roller now the creature type I like to call locomotion animation now, I, I do have this on another plow that I have, which I affectionately call creepy. Now, I put it to, at first, I had it at Proto Roller. I then eventually changed it to the mini robo creature type which is what the robo warden's locomotion animation is so most likely because i changed it to proto roller before mini robo that is what keeps it from going underground I'm not 100 percent sure on that you can also change a flying lizards creature type when natively it is flying lizard if you change the creature type from flying lizard to bird that is going to prevent it from crashing into the ground and it also makes it go a bit faster too. Now I also captured a a Titan worm with a mod. I shrunk it down from seven meters to one meter, and then I changed its creature type from sandworm to floater. And then it started to float all over the place. And it developed this hitbox collision that had it hitting things and then bouncing around. I then upped the scale to two meters and that slowed it down, which I felt made it look a lot better and added to the whole spectacle. I have its loyalty set to 100% so that it's always floating around me somewhere. Now, recently I saw a picture of a glitch stacked flying snake that Contagion made. Now, I got inspired and I knew I had to give that a try. So I took my 
favorite flying snake, Maxillase. And I set the descriptor line, quotation, caret, underscore, set, underscore, G, P, X, rare, quotation. Right under the line, snake, underscore, A. Now that snake, underscore, A, was already there for Maxillase. Now I guessed that the set GPX rare should go there. Now the abysmal flying horror creature, that is the set GPX rare, is the only flying snake that has just the snake underscore A and that GPX rare as a descriptor hierarchy. So after I, I set that in, I just went in game and after the change, it looked great. Now, finally, we have the fixed child of Helios. That's right. I fixed that I fixed that expedition pit all right. <laughs> that one that would always just drag you into the ground. In essence, turning you into its hoe. After the fixes I made, you can now fly it in the air like it should have been given to us in the first place. It even has a gyroscopic auto-correcting function that makes you turn right side up so that you're... Uh, flying with it with you on top instead of you flying upside down uh, you can also help guide it right side up with some practice I usually turn to a direction until it writes me up properly uh, it's decent fast too when you hit the sprint on it how I did this is I gave it both When you get it from the expedition, the bone scale seed is set to 0x0, just like the creature seed and the creature secondary seed. I changed the bone scale seed to this 0xd4d292ed40ab79. E6. Notice that this is one of the only companions with no descriptors except for a unique ID. And I just changed that ID a bit just to make it mine. You get it from the expedition with a native creature type of land jellyfish. Uh, which I then changed to <laughs> and that did the trick and made it fly well that's gonna do it for now I'm glad you got to join me in this tutorial today thank you there's still much customizing and experimenting to be done with these creatures if you are already familiar with coding have been following my tutorials so far you can now create some very unique creatures that I hope you decide to share with us all don't forget to save your backups be cautious test often be kind and let your imagination guide you oh I want to let you know that I'm not gonna stop experimenting with these but I've been getting a lot of fun ideas lately that can only be further developed with the use of mods. So I'm gonna take some time and teach myself how to mod. I'll keep you all up to date with the latest developments. So subscribe and stay tuned. I am Monsetter, and you were on site. <laughs>